It's Mississippi Outdoors Radio here on Super Talk Mississippi every Monday at 12 noon. And after a, a week off last week, we're back in the swing of things. Join us now, uh, wildlife biologist Adam Butler and Fisheries Bureau Director Larry Pugh. How are you guys doing today? We're good, Dave. How do you hear? Can you hear us? Everything yeah. good? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, Dave. How's it going? Hey, Larry, how are you doing? Now, uh, th- this is... Um, it, it just keeps changing and getting more bizarre, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's been an adjustment for everybody, I think. Well, and that that's the uh, the situation here. And I would think, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong, we got a lot of folks with nothing to do. And I think, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure going fishing or going out hunting it counts as social distancing, doesn't it? I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm qualified to, to, to say that, but I would say your odds of, uh, if, you're, if you're alone in the outdoors, you're probably in a safe place. Yeah, I would think so. So uh, hopefully we're, we're seeing an uptick in some of this because I think a lot of folks have nothing else to do. So, hey, might as well go fishing. Might as well go hunting. Uh, ha- have you seen anybody stomp up on your secret place yet, Adam? <laughs> have not. Okay. I, I have not. I, you know, it's, it's been an adjustment for everybody, and uh, you know, for me personally, having to juggle young kids and stuff, it's 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 changed my schedule up a lot. So I'm 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 not one of those who's been able to get outdoors more than I normally would. I think, but I hope other people have been. Uh, most definitely. Now, well, one thing we want to address right up front. Uh, we've seen a lot of cancellations, a lot of closures, a lot of rescheduling of things. Turkey season is not one of those things, is it? It's not. Turkey season is still open. Um, was was never closed. I, and you know, it's kind of funny. Somebody, um, <clears throat> friend of mine, a couple of weeks back, sent me a, a screenshot of a, a social media meme or something that someone had put out. You know, when when a lot of the coronavirus closures were first getting started, and it was um, sort of like a screenshot of a, of a of a news broadcast, and somebody had went in there and photo edited a uh, title saying turkey season closed and as soon as they i I right off knew it was a joke but as soon as i saw that i thought to myself oh this is going to cause some problems for me and and it has um there's been a number of people that have called our office and and uh called me directly and stuff asking about that but that was that was just a vicious rumor someone put out turkey season is still open uh it, it has affected some mdwfp facilities and things and we can get into that but um now is as good a time as ever to get out and enjoy the Mississippi outdoors, try to keep from going stir crazy, I guess. Now, another thing uh, that, that we were talking about, WMAs, they're still open, right? They are. Our uh, wildlife management areas are all open, and Larry can probably address some of the, the fishing side of all of that. Um, you know, our, um, our state offices and our regional offices are all closed to the public. Um, you know, we do have a few skeleton crew staff in and out of there a, a little bit for the, but for all practical purposes those are closed off um on um state parks uh the parks for for those of you who, who you know may not may not turkey hunt or may not fish but want to get uh, you know want to find somewhere where you can get outside and exercise and enjoy the spring weather our parks are still open although the offices and the restrooms and, and things are not and the campgrounds for the most part, are not unless you have an RV. So if you've got a sort of self-contained RV and can hook up, you can still go to a park and camp out. But tent camping is uh, closed. Um, and then, as I said, offices and restrooms and things are closed. Um, it's important to note in that that uh, if you're, if you're going to go to a park, be sure. It, I'm talking specifically about Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks parks. So if you are... Um, you know, if you're interested in a in, in a forest service park or or maybe agencies, um, you need to check on those specifically. I think most of them are closed uh, to all use. So that would be even if you just wanted to get out and hike or whatever, they're they're closed. But ours are open. Um, you just the offices will be closed, and you can't camp there unless you have an RV. No. Hey Dave, hey Dave, I did I did. Uh, have a uh, confirm that with the Forest Service folks and the Corps of Engineers folks that their recreational areas is what they call them are, are totally closed. They're gated off. Um, that's the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, specifically, you know, people think of lakes like Davis Lake, 
we've got a lot of calls on that, or Lake Otissa. Those are closed. When you think about the Corps of Engineer uh, campgrounds um, at uh, Sardis, Enid, Grenada, and Arcabutla, those are completely closed. Um, so uh, we've taken a little bit different approach uh, and kept our campgrounds open at state fishing lakes and state parks, um, but they need to be self-contained. Uh, because the bathhouses are not open, the restroom facilities are not open. Uh, but I think uh, uh, it was a good idea for us to, to allow folks to still get outside. Um, I've been able to do some site visits and spend some time out in the field here the last 10 days. And trust me, there's a lot of people using our facilities right now. There's a lot of people fishing. There's a lot of people camping. And they're, they're, they're being smart about it. They're, they're not congregating in large groups, but uh, I think it's awesome that they're able to get out, still get out on the water. Now, we have a text on the C Spire text line uh, from the 601 said, what about shooting ranges? The shooting ranges are uh, still open. So Turcotte, McHenry, and McIver are still open, um, but any pre-scheduled tournaments or other big events like that have been postponed, canceled and postponed, and we're obviously not taking any more of those right now um don't know how long that will last but but you can still get out and enjoy uh some shooting sports at those areas so that's another another option that you can get out with a small group uh and and go take advantage of the the sunshine and the nice spring weather we're having now let's pick one thing out of what you just said adam and just expand on it a little bit uh, because that's the, the immediate follow-up question when you say that something is closed or tournaments are canceled or, or any of these things. The immediate follow-up is, well, how long? When's it going to be back open? And the, the answer is very simple. We don't know. That's, that's right, Dave. And I, you, you're, you know, in, your business, in, in your business, you're probably keeping more abreast of the news than I am, but I, you know, I, I don't know that anybody has a good answer for that right now today. Um, you know, let's all hope and pray that this is short-lived and we can get life back to normal here, you know, in a matter of weeks or, or so. But right now we don't have a date on the calendar when all of those offices and, and different entities would open up and go back to their normal business routine. But trust me, we're going to get the word out immediately as soon as we reach that point. Uh, is, is, there's not going to be a lot of delay getting that word out because I think we're all already chomping at the bit. And it looks like with what the president said yesterday, extending the social distancing uh, at the federal level until the end of April, uh, I, I would think at least for your, your Forest Service and your federal parks and the Army Corps of Engineer areas, uh, you're looking at least May, I would think, before they would reopen. Uh, I, I think that's a fair guess, don't you? Well, being, seeing, Dave, seeing how those are federal, you know, federal entities, federal agencies, um, I would believe those agencies would mirror uh, what the order, ever, whatever order the president's come down with. So uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we follow that. But I know that the Corps, Army Corps and the Forest Service will probably follow those guidelines through the end of April. Uh, Eric in Madison on the ceasefire text line says, what's the status of the rifle range at Turcotte? The website shows it's still closed from down to trees. I don't have an answer for that. I'll, I can check on that, and um, maybe here after one of the breaks we can get an answer for that, but I don't, I don't know what the status of that would be at the moment. Now, one thing we do know is closed in the middle of all this, and we have her in all the time to talk about all the good things they have going on. The uh, Museum of Natural Science is closed, right? That's, that's correct. It, it closed. It, I guess it was one of the first entities that, um, that our agency closed, and it still remains closed. Uh, the North Mississippi Visitors uh, Education Center also, um, and you know, several of the, the big annual upcoming events that the museum has, like Nature Fest, have been canceled. I don't know if they've rescheduled another date, but I know they're not having a normal time as of right now. So. And again, in, in terms of rescheduling and reopening, uh, nobody knows right now. It's a day-by-day -day situation, week by week, and we'll have to wait and see how this thing plays out before we can get back to some semblance of business as usual. But there is one thing that is still business as usual. Uh, Major Reed and his crew are still out there doing their job, right? That's right. Uh, Major Reed's not able to be with us today because of the, the technical challenges of trying to pull this off remotely. Uh, but yes, our conservation officers are still out there working just as hard as ever. They're not getting a day off through any of this. And Larry and I were talking before we came on. That That's really true for 99% of MDWFP staff. You know, our, our conservation officers are out there in the county 
doing their thing, enforcing the rules and regs and helping hunters and anglers. Um, our field staff of biologists and lake managers and WMA managers, you know, this really uh, hasn't changed their life all that much. They, they generally are, are oftentimes working fairly independently in the field anyway, so really not a whole lot of change in business routine for, for most of those folks. It was very kind of you to cover for him. Major Reed isn't on because he's running low on minutes on his flip phone. We'll continue. I mean, tell him I said that. We'll continue on Mississippi Outdoors Radio next. Dave Hughes on the phone with us now. Adam Butler and Larry Pugh with the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks. Uh, you know what? Let, let's do something really weird for all of us right now, and let's talk about something other than coronavirus. Uh, I, I haven't had the opportunity to do that very much, but we can talk about something positive here because a lot of folks have some time off, not Adam, but everybody else. Uh, and as a result, they, they can get out and take advantage of some hunting and fishing. Uh, let, let, let's get an update uh, on how things are going. And I'm going to talk to Larry first because I'm a fishing guy. So sorry, Adam, you could just sit there and drink your coffee. Uh, Larry, uh, well, what's it looking like fishing wise here in the state? Well, it's wide open right now, Dave. Uh, whether you're, you know, talking about bass, brim, crappie, uh, as you go from the south part of the state to the central part of the state to the northern part, you can catch fish right now that are postponed, spawning, pre-spawn. You know, water temps are ranging from the the low 60s in the north part of the state to the mid 70s uh, in the south part of the state, and uh, we're getting all kind of good reports in. Um, uh, you know, if if uh, if you wanted to talk bass fishing, uh, we've gotten pictures sent in from all over the state. I had some big fish uh, sent in from Neshoba County Lake near Philadelphia. Uh, Lake Lamar Bruce was still uh, producing some big fish uh, as, as just as as early as last Friday, as recent as as last Friday. So uh, you know, fishing reports are incredible right now. Uh, the folks that are getting out, you know, they might not bite every day, but uh, uh, they're reporting a lot of success. Uh, and if you drive out to the reservoir, I guarantee you today you would have a hard time uh, finding a place to park to, because the crappie fishing is is good to excellent. Uh, you know, now's the time of year these crappie start moving in and moving in shallow water. And uh, um, I had a good friend that had a very good day uh, uh, as recently as Saturday. And uh, I got anticipate those reports to continue to get better. You're really making me want to have a fish fry now, Larry. Well, you got to catch them first, Dave. You know that's the problem. That, that that's the whole kink in the plan here is that you got to go catch them first. But it sounds like a lot of folks are doing that. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, I had the opportunity a couple of weeks ago, well, maybe ten days ago, to talk with some guys that had some uh, had really good success at Sardis and Enid. Uh, crappie fishing, um, Arca Butler is on fire. Um, we actually started getting our first uh, brim reports uh, in central and south Mississippi at our state lakes. Um, and I really expect uh, uh, the brim fishing to pick up next week, uh, really the next two weeks. We've got a full moon coming up in April, uh, and I expect our state lakes and park lakes brim fishing to really explode uh, starting next week. Well, and most people aren't aware that uh, the the moon does have some effect on that, right? Right, and uh, you know, I'm not going to say there's a lot, there's a tremendous amount of science behind it, but I can tell you that particularly brim, uh, they're going to be bedding that first that first full moon and the first new moon in April and May and June, and uh, they'll spawn multiple times. So, you folks that like to catch big brim, now's the time to be gearing up and getting ready to go. Can I can I add something to that? I got I got a, I got a story on that. Oh, okay, we're ready, Adam. Go ahead. Uh, over the weekend, my my cousin and I took our our young sons uh, on a turkey hunt. Uh, so the the boys are six and five, and uh, we we ended up getting on a turkey that gobbled a whole bunch from one place and didn't want to move. And would you believe those boys eventually ran out of patience and decided it would be better if we went fishing. So my cousin and I had to get up and walk away from a goblin turkey to take the boys fishing. But the the happy ending of the story is Larry's right. The the brim must be bedding because we got into a mess of them. Yeah, and that's the best part. When you do find a, a, a nice spot of brim, 
it, it, it's you can almost find yourself in the situation where it, it's just almost a routine. You cast, you reel it in, you take the fish off, you cast again. It's just one after another sometimes, it seems like. Well, there's a lot of people. Uh, that's what we cut our teeth on. That's how we got introduced to fishing as kids, whether with your dad or your granddad or whomever, um, was going to farm ponds and, and brim fishing. And, uh, you know, it's great a great opportunity to take youth, to take kids, because the action, once you find them, can be fairly fast, if not really fast. And, uh, you know, it's just a great way to introduce someone that's never fished uh, uh, introduce them to fishing, uh, and like I said, it's going to be good uh, no matter where you live in the state. Uh, the brim, the brim fishing will be good for the next three months. See, yeah, I always think of, I always think of May being the month that it it really heats up, but I guess I guess there's an early spawn in April as well, huh? Particularly in in South Mississippi, yeah, which is where we were. Uh, you know, with those warmer water temps, Dave, you're talking. Uh, uh, you know, uh, lakes in the south part of the state, like Lake Perry down around Beaumont, is historically known for big brim. Um, you know, I fully expect the brim to be on the bed, you know, at this next full moon. And uh, as you work your way north through the state, um, you know, it'll carry on for the next three to four months, depending on how quick things warm up. All you have to do is just go get them. Yeah, uh, and, and it's pretty neat, you know, Mother Nature sort of takes care of herself uh, with, you know, the timing in this. Uh, you know, the the bass reports start coming in, the bass start spawning, followed by the crappie, and then once the crappie are done, the brim will be going, and, and in some cases you could have them, you know, all going at the same time, but more often than not, you know, brim are the last species to spawn out of those three, so, uh, you know, if you go from the central part of the state to the north part of the state, crappie's where it's at right now. You know, the crappie have moved shallow. It's time to time to get out there and catch a load of crappie, uh, which tells me the bass are probably done, um, you know, spawning. So uh, it's really neat to see the regional differences as you move from the south part of the state to the north part. Got a, a couple of things here. One of these I can answer for you guys. Mike from Boonville. Uh, says, does a 14-foot aluminum boat with only a trolling motor have to be registered? Yes. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. That's correct. I, w I was paying attention a couple of weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> the other one, though, uh, Rusty and Greenbull, you guys might can help with this, and Larry especially. Uh, Rusty wants to know, what's the closest brim fishing lake to the city of Grenada? Wow. Put well, me on the spot, Larry. No, no, uh, that's a that's a good question. You know, I can tell you that surprisingly, uh, the flood control reservoirs, and I, again, I say that so frequently. Um, gr you know, uh, Grenada uh, going up fifty five to Enid. Uh, you know, they have good brim populations, and the the brim fishing does get good. I would definitely say it gets good later. Uh, probably in May, more so than, than in April, if I were looking at those big reservoirs. Um, but uh, from a, a, a small, smaller impoundment uh, area, you know, you're going to have to either drive south uh, toward Holmes County, which can provide some good brim fishing. You're going to have to go to the Oxbows uh, or go west, which the river's so high right now, uh, I would rule those out. Are you going to have to, you know, go east? you know, from Grenada towards Starville and look at uh, 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 Lake Lounge State Park, um, Octavia County Lake, Lake Monroe. So, you know, unfortunately, uh, if you're looking at a public water, public waters other than those reservoirs, he's got, you know, pretty good drive. Yeah. And that's just a, a, a trick of, uh, of geography. But brim, the, the beautiful part to me about brim is if you want to go catch some brim, pretty much if you can find water, you can find brim. Rivers, creeks, farm ponds, as you said, if, if there's any significant body of water, chances are pretty decent you can find some brim in it, right? Sure. You know, they're uh, 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 widely distributed in every county of uh, the state, and uh they're, they're, they spawn multiple times a year, so uh, the populations typically are self-sustaining and are in really good shape, and uh, it don't have to be a large reservoir or uh, a large public water. It could be a, a 
three acres farm pond that you know has a really good brim population that you you know can go fish yeah exactly a, a lot of those smaller bodies of water will really fool you uh, especially when it, it might have not have much of anything else in it but uh, there's a decent chance it might have some brim in it because they are very common and like you said they're very active and i'm going to be honest they're just a ball to catch um again you know aggregate spawners you know when people say oh their brim are on the bed that's what we mean when we say aggregate spawners they're they they're they're spawn uh, a large group spawn at one time so when you see those saucer shaped uh brim beds you know they're usually going to be loaded with uh big brim trying to uh spawn starting you know this spring fantastic we're going to take a break when we come back adam i'm going to give you your innings we get to talk about turkeys next how about that Looking forward to it. We'll do that here on Mississippi Outdoors Radio on Super Talk Mississippi next. And it's time for this week's Gateway Getaway. And this week, our Gateway Getaway is Natchez State Park, just 10 miles north of historic Natchez, the oldest settlement on the Mississippi River. The land was originally inhabited by the Natchez Indians and then followed by the French, who, of course, colonized the city back in 1716. Natchez offers 50 RV campsites and 10 cabins. They also have camping picnicking, and fishing in their 230-acre lake. Natchez State Park, one of the few state parks that has a wildlife management area adjacent to the park uh, where you can go hunting. You can make your reservation by going to mdwfp.com or you can call 1-800-467-2757 or call the park directly at 601 442 five eight and don't forget you can buy an annual park permit for fifty dollars that lets you in all of the mississippi state parks for a solid year if you'd like one of those you can call 601-432-2219 this week's gateway getaway natchez state park now i i don't i don't want to keep adam waiting because yeah he, he's been waiting the entire show for this opportunity we get to talk about turkey hunting now so uh adam you, you said you didn't get a chance to go over the over the over the weekend. Well, I did. I, I did over the over the weekend, Dave. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Just you know, having to play schedules and, and and getting looks and stuff like that. But um, yeah, we're getting to the the best part of the season. Um, you know, gobbling activity in most of the state peaks around April the first. Um, and you know we're we're getting close to that. So even the folks kind of up north, I know where it's been a little bit slow. It it should be picking up already, and and the best is yet to come. Um, so reports we've been getting from from different parts of the state, gobbling activity uh, has been it's been sort of funny this year. Up until really recently, um, not a lot of gobbling on the roost. Turkeys gobbling more after after they hit the ground on up in the morning. Um, which is a little abnormal for the early part of the season um, that you don't hear as much roost gobbling. But I don't know. I, I talked to a lot of people over that went over the weekend, and and it seems like almost everyone had really good hunts. So the best is always kind of towards the middle of the season uh, when it comes to our spring season here in Mississippi. And so we're just we're just getting to that. So it's a good time to get out. Well, and I know we had had some people in previous weeks here on Mississippi Outdoors Radio talking about the fact that they they weren't getting the gobbling that they had gotten in years past it had really declined quite a bit uh, even at peak gobbling is this peak lower than a, a normal year in years past as far as the amount of gobbling that's happening well I, I really won't be able to say that with any kind of uh data for some time you know we do we conduct a um we call our spring gobbler spring gobbler hunting survey every year which is avid turkey hunters who uh, believe it or not, voluntarily record their information uh, from their outings and, and give it to us, and that's one way we're really able to look at gobbling activity from year to year. So it'll be it'll be a little while before we get all of that back and um, have it entered. But I, I do know, you know, looking at the data we have instantaneously, which is the game check data, um, we're surprisingly within almost a few birds of where we were at this annual fluctuation in harvest uh so it's, you know this is only the second year we've had game check or had mandatory game check and so it's been sort of surprising to me how close uh this year has tracked the previous year now interestingly if you look at the map of where all of that's coming from there's a few 
uh, a few places that are a little different this year from last year. Um, so, um, but in, in terms of, you know, the overall just reports from our WMA harvest and, and stuff like that, you know, it, it's, it's shaping up to be a really good season. And, and like I said, looking at that spring gobbler data, historically, usually this uh, last part of March, early part of April is, is the best part of the season. And that is, you know, one thing I, this, it, I think it's probably played into this year, you know, we really, we, we sort of skipped spring this year. We went straight from winter into summer, it feels like, you know, and in a normal year, uh, uh, most of March, you're you're still going to have pretty cool, crisp mornings that, you know, get mild during the middle of the day. Uh, but man, it's it's been pretty doggone hot uh, for the last several weeks. You know, waking up and the air temperature already be in the 70s and humidity be really high. So that's that's been a little abnormal, and that could probably be playing into you know the amount of gobbling activity that people hear because turkeys are they're finicky and prone to fluctuations in the weather weather. Well, and that is a little surprising that the game check numbers are, are running basically even with last year because with the current situation, that's what we've been talking about. You would expect either a few more people getting out or the people that always get out getting out a bit more. And the, the, the number of turkeys taken doesn't really seem to be backing that up, does it? Well, no, um, it doesn't. I've, I've had a lot of people uh, have asked me that question. Do they think with, uh, you know, people not being able to, to work or not being on their normal routine as the turkey harvest going to go up, more people, you know, with nothing else to do going to hunt more. It'll be it'll be some time before we have, you know, some of our postseason survey data in that will let us know if there were, in fact, more mandates this year or if, you know, the number of, of trips per person increased. So here in a few months we will be able to answer that. I can't really answer that right now today because, we you know, right now all we have is the – the raw game check number, which, like I said, is surprisingly very close to what it was last year. Um, but, you know, I, I guess it just goes to show that with, with a lot of things, uh, just because you're able to go doesn't mean you're going to be successful. So it, it very well may be that more people are hunting and spending that time outdoors, and for whatever reason, they're just not finding success. And so the number, the number is tracking pretty close to what it would be otherwise. Uh, would would you say that that might be indicative of the population of turkeys in the state? It could be. We we expected going into this year that we we sort of expected numbers to be up a little bit. Um, turkey populations are really reliant on having a good hatch, and it's usually the hatch two years prior is what determines how good the season is going to be. And so when we look backwards and look at 2018's hatch, it was it was really good for. Uh, basically the southern two-thirds of the state and, and, and most of the delta, uh, the areas of the delta that have turkeys, had a really good hatch in 2018. So that information, you know, had us expecting this season to be um, to be a little bit of a bump up. Um, but again, you know, the weather so far this year has not necessarily been ideal. You know, the best days for, for turkeys to gobble and for hunters to find success are those, you know, clear, you know, crisp, you know, 45 to 50 degree, you know, at daylight with, with not a lot of humidity. And we just really haven't had those. You know, it's been, it's, it's felt a lot like summertime here lately. Uh, so that may be playing into some of it. But again, I, you know, just talking to the circle that I talk to and um, my, my wife picks at me that my phone never stops ringing this time of the year. I know a lot of people this past weekend, just in the last four or five days, it seems like it's picked up a lot. So hopefully the best is yet to come. Well, we got a text from the 662 uh, that just came in, said, best turkey season I have ever had. So that, that's a good sign. Well, there you go. He, he didn't share a location, I see. <laughs> uh, he said he'd, he'd swap you. <laughs> he, he, he'll give you his if you give him yours. And I think that phone call is never going to happen no matter how busy your phone is. <laughs> that's, that's my guess. Uh, we do have another question. Um, uh, from the 601, is it possible to get a John boat registered now, or are all offices closed, or can you do it online? You know, uh, David, that would depend. I don't know if the boat's been registered before. Um, you know, if it's been regis registered before, I mean, all you've got to do is is renew it, and you can renew that boat registration online. If you've never registered it, then I would suggest calling uh, the main office here, um, we are uh, do have people here that um, are answering the phone, um, answering the phones, and can answer that question and determine the best way to uh, 
to get that boat registered if it had never been registered. And as is often the case with questions that we get here on the show, uh, the, the answer a lot of times is it depends because there there is no one blanket answer for some of these questions. Well, I'm guessing, uh, you know, and I don't know, but I'm assuming the boat's never been registered or uh, he would be he or she would be able to renew the, the boat registration online or they could do it anywhere hunting and fishing license are sold. Um, so I'm guessing the boat's never been registered. So if that's the case, uh, I would suggest they call uh, our main office here in Jackson um, and uh, it's 601-432-2400. And uh, we'll get in touch with somebody to uh, to help them out. 601-432-2400. Right. Number that somebody will answer that, answer that line, and uh, we'll get them in touch with somebody that can help them with their, you know, renewing it if it's never been registered. Uh, got got a, uh, a text back on the person, by the way, Adam, that said, best turkey season I have ever had. Said it's uh, up in Yalabusha, Tallahatchie County, and said, Adam can come on. I need some expert tips. <laughs> Well, there you go. That is a good area of the state, though, definitely. Hey, and Dave, I do want to circle back to uh, one question we had earlier about the Turcotte range. Yeah. Um, the the rifle range is indeed closed. Uh, so Turcotte itself is open. Uh, the pistol range is still open. The archery range is still open. Uh, the sporting clay range is still open. But the rifle range is closed, not because of coronavirus, but because the Pearl River has been backed up into that area for, for quite some time now because of how much rain we've had this spring. So it looks like it'll probably still be closed for a number of weeks, but you can still come out to Turcotte to uh, shoot your bow or shoot your pistol or shoot your shotgun. Fantastic. See, we all the answers. You want answers? We've got them here on Mississippi Outdoors Radio, at least for one more segment. Final segment of the show up next. Adam Butler, Larry Pugh with the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks on the line. Uh, you know, we were talking about fishing. Larry, I'm going to ask you just very quickly, where are they hitting the best? Where do we need to go? Well, if I were going to go this weekend, uh, I think I'd have to go to Neshoba County Lake to bass fish or crappie fish. And then I think I'd have to get me some of that Ross Barnard Reservoir crappie fishing right now. I really enjoy that. Uh, man, when the crappie move up shallow on Barnett, it is just a load of fun. I think I'd have to have to get in on some of that action. And if I and if I wanted to try the brim next week, I'd probably uh, go south toward uh, my Smith County and and go check out Prentice Walker Lake. It's got some giant brim in it, and I think I'd have to go check that out. And I know how fishermen work. We just got a list of all the places Larry's not going. <laughs> No, I was I was actually being truthful there. I, I, you know, there's no secrets here for me, uh, unlike the turkey hunters. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, uh, one thing I did wanted to touch touch on before we close out, uh, real quick, Dave, is is I, I met with a guy last week and he was looking for a place to go, and I wanted to remind the listeners, you know, go to our website and look under fishing and boating, and uh, if you click on ramps and piers. Uh, you can find any public water, uh, boat ramp, uh, fishing pier, anywhere in the state. You can search it by county. You can search it by water body. You can even look at it on an interactive map if you wanted to and click on it. So, you know, getting back to the call or the caller from Grenada, you know, if he were to go to that, that link and look at that map or, or look search by county, uh, that will pull up all the public boat ramps uh, in the state, tell you how to get there. Uh, anything and everything you've ever wanted to know about where a boat ramp is. Well, you know, I, I'm going to go to a question real quick from the C Spire text line uh, because he, he thinks he's being censored. So I'm going to ask it and, and throw this in the lap of the experts here, uh, uh, specifically about crappie fishing. Uh, he says that there are some people in Missouri, Kentucky, and Illinois who are coming down, catching crappie in Mississippi, and then taking them back to their state and selling them. Yeah, Dave, we've been hearing that for probably, I don't know, 15 years. Um, and we have very strict uh, regulations in place on those crappie, on those reservoirs, those four flood control reservoirs. You know, 15 fish per person, 12 inch minimum. We've got boat limits, we've got pole limits. Um, you know, if, 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 as long as they're not violating 
the daily bag limit. Um, as long as they're not violating that, that boat limit, once they take possession of those fish, if they're taking them back to Missouri and selling them, then that's an issue Missouri needs to, to handle. Um, we've never been able to prove that. That's been uh, uh, said uh, multiple times, multiple years, um, and we've had conversations about it with other agencies and, uh, you know, don't know that that's going on, but I know it's been said. And again, that that's uh, that's for Missouri or Illinois or, or Kentucky to deal with, uh, not us. But like you said, once once they catch them and load them in the in the truck, it, it's their problem. Well, they're point. keeping them in freezers. We hear, you know, they're keeping them in freezers here in Mississippi and transporting them back and selling them once they get home. You cannot sell crappie in the state of Mississippi. Period. It's a game fish. Uh, you can't sell them. Um, and if, that again, if they're not violating any of the uh, re- regulations that we have in place, uh, once they uh, get back home, then that's something that, you know, the, the natural resource agencies would have to deal with once the, those anglers got back home. Adam, I know you guys are uh, social distancing by shooting some more episodes of Mississippi Outdoors TV, right? <laughs> well, we, we're, we were just talking about that. We are trying to, um, this week on the show, we'll have a, a Holmes County turkey hunt, um, a a really cool hunt, so it's timely for this time of the year. Uh, Go check that out. And also a really great bass fishing trip to to a a lake in Clark County uh, where they put a lot of fish in the boat. Um, Right now in April, the the normal Thursday night uh, schedule of Mississippi Outdoors is off, so you got to catch it on Saturdays only now. So the show airs Saturdays at 5.30 on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. And then, of course, if you miss it or want to see any of the shows, all of those are available on the website, um, YouTube, our YouTube channel, uh, and Facebook, and all that sort of stuff. You can go back and find endless hours of video to entertain yourself while you are quarantined at home. Hey, I like nice spin on the end there, Adam. <laughs> He's talented. Boy, I'm di- he is becoming a past master at this. I like it. Adam Butler, Larry Pugh with the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks. Uh, get out and and do some turkey hunting. Just not where Adam's at, and you you social got a, distancing. Show social distancing. You you got a wonderful list of places that Larry's not going to be fishing at, so you can go there and catch some fish this weekend. We we got everything sorted out, guys. Yeah, that's fantastic. Great time to be outdoors. So get outdoors. Heaven knows a lot of people have the time on their hands to do it right now. We'll do it again next week with Mississippi Outdoors Radio. As always, thanks, guys. I appreciate it so much. And we will talk to you next week. In the meantime, don't forget, kids, wash your damn hands. I'll see you tomorrow.